Hey friends, it's good to be back with you. In this video, I'd like to go over how to solve ordinary differential equations in MATLAB. Now, if you've watched some of the previous videos, you'll see that I have used MATLAB to solve ordinary differential equations. I talked about it a little bit, but I didn't really go over rigorously any, any process for doing it. Well, that's what I'd like to do now. I want to go through step by step to lay out kind of the big picture and then uh, go onto the computer and walk you through a couple different ways to uh, solve a problem in MATLAB. First thing we're going to need is a differential equation. So I'm going to use this one. I've used this one before. And this is an ordinary differential equation, which means there's only one uh, independent variable. And that independent variable is y. So it's actually y of t. It's, it's maybe a little more correct to write this as y of t. In the books and things, they'll leave out the parenthesis t. So y is a function of t, although it's usually, where'd my, where'd my erasers go? There they are. Um, there we go. That's usually how it's written. It's understood that y is a function of t. And just to remind you, when we say solve this differential equation, what that means is find a function, y of t, that makes this true. Now this one is kind of an unusual one. It's classed as a stiff differential equation. Now there's no rigorous definition of what stiffness means for differential equations. It's rare to have a term in the mathematical world that doesn't have a rigorous definition, but this is one of those. It's enough to say that it's badly conditioned, that if your, your solver isn't quite up to the task, that um, errors in your, in your uh, solution will propagate without bound. Go back to one of the previous videos where I talked about the difference between in, implicit and explicit finite difference solutions. The implicit solution works for this almost every time. The explicit one will work as long as there's a, the delta t is small enough. If it's not small enough, the, in, the, the solution blows up. That is, the errors in the solution uh, increase without bound. So this one's as simple as it looks. It's actually a little dicey to solve if you're not careful. Now, the differential equation solver we're going to use in MATLAB is called ODE45. And it's a, what, fourth, fifth order runga kata, I think is where that, the numbers come from. And so let's go over the, in, in concept, step by step, what we've got to do. So got a differential equation, got an initial condition. There's three things you need to do uh, in order to solve a differential equation in MATLAB. First thing you got to do is specify the solution range and the initial condition. Okay, that means that we're going to solve for, for t0 to t1, whatever that is. Now in this case, I'm going to solve for the range I'm going to use is 0 to 5. So zero seconds to five seconds. That's step one. Step two is to define the, the differential equation itself. So define the equation for MATLAB. Now there's two different ways to do this. One of them is to write it out as an anonymous function, and the other one is to write a little M file that, that where the differential equation can live. And so when you call the differential equation solver, you're either going to re refer to that uh, anonymous function, you're actually going to call that function that defines the equation. And I'll show you both solutions here. So the fourth, third thing you need to do, not fourth, third thing you need to do is actually call OD, that's actually not capitalized, sorry. MATLAB is case sensitive. Call the ODE45 or whichever differential equation solver you're using. By far, this will be the one you use the most. This will work for most ordinary differential equations. Once in a while, you'll find one that has some weird characteristic that this fails at, but it doesn't fail often. So if you don't know what else to do, use that one. If you're not going to use this one, you better have a reason. So we're going to do this step by step at my computer. We're going to specify the solution range and the initial condition. Then we're going to define the equation two different ways. And we're going to call ODE45. And I guess, last thing, if there's a step four, let's plot the solution. Now, what does it mean to plot a solution? Okay, why are we plotting rather than writing down an equation? This is a very uh, important concept here. If you have a differential equation and you can solve it exactly by whatever means, this one you can kind of do it by integration, but by whatever means you solve an equation exactly, 
That means you're going to write down, in this case, a function y of t. And you're going to write it down. It's going to be closed form. You know what it is. That's the solution. Here, when you call ODE45, it isn't going to tell you an equation. It's going to give you a list of points that you then plot. What that means is you still don't know what y of t is, but you do know what it looks like. Now, does that matter? Probably not, but maybe. Okay, so in, in this case, when you're finding a solution, you're actually writing down y of t. This one, you, when you're done, you still don't know what y of t is, but you know what it looks like. I can show you a plot of it without actually knowing what the function is. And so it's maybe the difference between how a mathematician would think of the problem and how an engineer or physicist would think of the problem. I, as an engineer, if I can draw a picture of the solution and the picture's good enough, I don't care anymore. Have I solved it? Sort of, I guess. I've solved it approximately. I've estimated the solution. But I haven't been able to write down y of t. So it, you know, use whichever approach you want to use, but understand that there is kind of a philosophical difference between the two. So with that in mind, let's go to my computer and let's, let's solve this. And we'll use two different ways of, on step two for defining the equation.